Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. Look, the channel has been doing fantastically because of you guys, but I'm going to have to ask a little bit more of you. I'd like you to uppercut that like button like it's a demon and your doom guy. If possible, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, as this all helps tremendously. And comment down below with a fist emoji, just to show that like button who's boss. Anyways, on to the story. How to Become a Mortal, written by Jayhawk Fools. The man who become God grinned as he looked upon the obsidian doors in front of him, rain peppering his face. It had been several millennia since he had last started his journey to become mortal, ever since he told his cretin of a father his wish, and having it thrown back in his face, he had sworn to make it a reality. It was then that he had turned away from his given name and refused to be acknowledged as anything other than his birthright. At first, he thought his study of magic would bring about the answer, but after discovering that it would only lead him to becoming a mad lich who barely remembered his name, he knew that he had to take a different path. He may not have been the nicest person, but he knew crazy when he saw it. Then he thought undying devotion to a deity might bring about his wish. If they'd become immortal, why couldn't he? But after he killed his first god, he knew that was not the answer either. They were just like him, creatures who had obtained enough power to play as gods, knowing full well that a simple slash of the blade in the right spot could bring them crumbling down. It was then that he was told the true path to immortality by a soothsayer with knowledge not of this world. How he knew she spoke truth, he could not say, and yet her word struck his soul like an arrow hitting a target. She had told him there had only ever been one person to become a truly immortal, behind doors of solid obsidian, and that to reach him was akin to reaching the stars above. The old hag had warned him that he would not find his wish, and yet after so long he stood in front of these doors, knowing his reward was a simple push away. He turned around and looked out upon the world beneath him, its chaotic grey ocean stretching far beyond his eyesight, roiding from the ever-present storm above. Messermen would have died before reaching this place, yet not the man who'd become God. He smiled gently, breathing his last breath of mortality before sighing. It is time to fulfill the oath I made as a boy. The man turned back around and placed his palms upon the cool, polished stone, and watched them vanish like mist above a pot. What? he said, confused, before suddenly hearing the sounds of birds chirping in the distance. He turned, and saw that, instead of being on the desolate rock in the middle of the tempest, he was now standing in what could only be described as paradise. A long, flat beach stretched out before him, its golden sands glimmering in the sunlight as sapphire blue waves gently crashed into the land. Vibrant green trees shot up above him, giving him shade as a soft, warm breeze hit his face. The man closed his eyes and breathed in the air, feeding it warm him to his core. So, uh, this is immortality. Uh, not quite. The man's eyes shot open, and he turned in the direction of the new voice that had shattered his newfound glee. What he saw, and he put him more on edge. Sitting in a withered old chair, facing the sea, was a regular-looking young man, sipping from an odd-shaped glass filled with red and orange liquid. His clothes looked well-made and formal, yet the man who would become God had never seen any kind of deity wear garments so bland. Every piece of cloth was black, save for the cloth around the stranger's neck, which was a deep blood red. On his face were glasses that had been darkened as if to hide his eyes, yet the man knew the stranger could see everything in front of him. As the stranger raised his red and orange drink up to his face, he motioned for the man to come closer. You should probably sit. Extra-dimensional travel can put some people on their ass pretty fast. The man who'd become God smirked. I am not some people. He flicked his wrist, and the sand beside the stranger shifted against itself. Before a stone throne fit for his majesty rose out of the beach, the man sat down upon his seat and smiled triumphantly. Says the guy who still sat down, the stranger mumbled into his glass, serving more of each drink. 
The man looked towards the stranger's face and tried to use his magic to see past the glasses into the audience's eye. Hey, I'm not your audience, the stranger said, which surprised the man. Can you read my thoughts, he thought, trying to keep his face plain. If you're wondering, no, I can't read your thoughts, the stranger said, placing his glass down upon the sand. I've just encountered enough wannabe gods that I know how little you think about people. The man raised an eyebrow. Is that a challenge? The stranger sighed before leaning back into his lawn chair. No, but I'm sure you'll take it as one. Silence followed for the next couple of minutes, before the sound of snoring made the man realize the stranger had fallen asleep. He cleared his throat as loudly as he could, and the stranger turned his head. Oh, what? The stranger said indignantly. The man, who would become God, bit his cheek, resisting the urge to use magic to blow this fool to dust. First, he needed answers. Might I presume that you are the one I was told could help me lead me to immortality? I highly doubt it, the stranger said, turning to pick his glass back up. The man furrowed his brows. And why is that? The stranger sipped from his drink once more, sloping the last remnants down before responding. Because you probably weren't told I could lead you to it. The man was thoroughly confused now. What? What do you mean? The stranger sighed before sitting upright and turning fully to the man. Let me guess, some prophet slash soothsayer slash fortune teller told you that only one person slash creature slash entity has ever achieved slash gained slash earned immortality, and then either give you a creepy smile and or dreadful warning that what you want most is unobtainable. Am I right? The man nodded, trying to decipher what the stranger was trying to say. Yes, and the words led me to your doors. Which, when you saw the gigantic obsidian doors in the middle of the deadly storm on a planet so far away from the form of civilization, that you must have taken several thousand years to reach, you then opened, not thinking that all of that isn't a massive red flag. The man, starting to get tired of the stranger's petulant attitude. If you will not show me the way to immortality... Then you are just another obstacle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's generally what you people call me. Uh, just get to blowing me up already so that we can move this along. The man who'd become a god smirked internally as he decided to grant the stranger's wish. He held his hand up to the sky, calling up a storm of clouds above him before smiting a massive lightning bolt down upon the stranger, obliterating everything in a massive explosion. The man, who had become God, vaporized any debris heading in his direction and watched as the dust and smoke cleared to reveal a massive crater where the stranger had sat. Hmm. The man grunted, leaning onto one arm. Maybe I used too much magic. Ah, uh, gee, you think? A voice said right next to him, and he jumped out of his throne, whipping around to see the stranger leaning against the stone, sipping on a brand new drink. There was no sign of any explosion on the young man, and as he sipped his drink, he pointed at the crater. You owe me another chair, by the way. The man who'd become God looked at the large crater, watching the chunks of wood burning to ash, before turning back to the stranger. How is this possible? The stranger sighed, stirring his drink. Oh, you do understand the definition of immortal, right? The man couldn't believe his eyes. Are you saying that you are a being who has achieved immortality? Well, uh, I wouldn't really say achieved. Cursed with it, more like. The stranger mumbled, trying to pick up a piece of ice with his straw. The man who had become God smiled with glee. Incredible! <laughs> After all these years, all those false gods and false paths, I have finally found the answer to my question. I, the man who would become God, shall finally become immortal. The stranger scrunched up his face. Uh, yeah, I don't think so, buddy, and... Uh, I think you should have stuck with Greg. The man felt his blood drain from his face. Nobody knew his true name anymore. He had scrubbed it from history using magic. How do you... Greg, son of Dale, born 1,008 years after the rise of the Empire of Galheim, to a Thatcher and a tavern maid approximately three miles from Galvington. You trained at the Imperial Majors Guild for five years, apprenticed under Halvar the Wise for 32 Developed a potion to prolong your life by the age of 63. 
Uh, do I need to go on? Greg stood in shock at the knowledge the stranger had, and watched as the stranger flicked his wrist. Suddenly, he was sitting in front of a beach bar with one of those reddish-orange drinks in his hands. He looked up to see the stranger whipping out a tin container, still dressed in odd attire. Who are you? How do you know these things? He finally said after a few moments. The stranger whistled, clearly thinking his answer over. Ah, uh, now that you sound. Now that's a really long story. As uh, far as who I am, well, um, uh, I've gone by a lot of names over the years. Uh, Thanatos, Michael, Baron Samedi, uh, not all of them male, uh, mind you. As he said this, the stranger suddenly shifted forms, becoming a young woman, though she was still dressed in black garments. Hell, Persephone, Tia, all different names for me, but I always have the same job. She placed a tin container down and removed her sunglasses, revealing her tired and weary eyes for those grey irises. She looked into Greg's confused eyes, staring deep into his soul. As she gently smiled, I'm death. Greg dropped his glass, letting it smash underneath his seat. Death frowned, crossing her arms. Hey, that my tie took a long time to perfect. I don't understand, Greg said, standing up and backing away. Are you here to kill me? Was this all a trick? Death grimaced, hemming and hawing before shaking her head. Technically, yes and no, in all honesty. You were told that you weren't going to be able to achieve your wish. Greg, no. He had forsaken that name. The man who would become God shook his head. No! There must be another way. I am the man who would become God. He held out his hand, and in a flash of light, a sword of the Almighty appeared in his hand, its golden blade shining in the sunlight. This blade was foretold to send all who touch it to their death. Death rolled her eyes. Man, you are sicker than most. The man who had become God held the blade out in front of him. I see now what I must do to obtain immortality. I must defeat death itself. Death sighed before appearing in the blink of an eye in front of the sword of the Almighty. The man who had become God smirked, thinking that his foe had just committed a fatal error. Before he watched death slowly impale herself onto the blade, right through its heart, his jaw dropped as death carefully walked forward until the hilt of his blade rested on her chest. And he looked around to her to see the sword clearly coming out of back. Um, can't really send death to itself now, can you, Greg? Death sighed in exhaustion, before appearing back behind the bar with no sign of the wound on her chest. She picked up some bottles and started to mix a drink in the tin container. Need a drink? I'll explain everything if you finally stop acting like an idiot. Greg nodded, sitting back in his seat and placing the sword of the Almighty on the bar top. Death shifted forms back into a man, before shaking the drink and pouring it into the glass. He placed an umbrella at the top next to the straw, before sliding it across to Greg. Here, have a try. Greg picked the glass up and took a sip, feeling the delicious drink cool his body from the warm sun. Death watched patiently as Greg sipped more of the drink down, before he placed it back onto the bar top. Now are you ready to listen? Greg nodded, and Death started to mix another Mai Tai as he talked. I wasn't always Death. A long, long, long time ago, I was like you, just another person, living out their rather normal life. I had a job, a family, even a dog. Unfortunately, I was a lot like you, and wanted to live forever. So when a being claiming to be Death approached me one day and offered me a job, I was all too happy to take it. A glimmer of hope shimmered in Greg's eyes as he leaned forward, suddenly eager to hear more. Perhaps he could be his answer. Death saw Greg's sudden shift in demeanor and rolled his eyes as he poured another Mai Tai into the grass. Don't be too excited. The story doesn't have a happy ending. Greg scoffed. What do you mean you became... Death glared at Greg, and suddenly Greg realized that he had made a mistake. The warm breeze suddenly died down as the icy spike grew in his heart, and the sound around him seemed to disappear. Immortal? Do you have any idea what that actually means? Greg shook his head, and Death leaned forward, his shadow growing behind him. Once I took this job, I couldn't die, which also means that I couldn't live. I watched my family grow old and die, and watched their kids grow old and die, over and over and over again until nobody even remembered their names. I watched as my civilization grew, prospered, withered, and died, before being replaced with another and another. I watched as my people slowly evolved into new life forms, different from me in almost every way, traveling to brand new planets and stars as my homeworld was engulfed by its own star. 
I watched as stars formed, galaxies combined, and universes died before a whole new one started up again, repeating the cycle. Different every time. And sure, I can change how time around me works, so I can skip past those first couple billion years of nothing, and those last gogglplex where it's just black holes and quarks. But in the end, I always have to be there, as a cosmic force watching over all life in the universe. Silence engulfed the area for a time, before death leaned back and the sound of waves resumed in Greg's ears. The original left didn't fill me in on that little tidbit of knowledge before cursing me with this job, so I decided to explain that to every other being who wants to be immortal. You think I'm fully here, on this island, ignoring the rest of the universe, when I'm not having this conversation with 40 other blank who would become gods every dozen millennia. I'm doing my job as a psychopomp, making sure that any time somebody actually dies, they at least get to enjoy a little bit of peace and serenity before they stop existing altogether, like I should have done. Greg sat in silence and watched as death picked up its Mai Tai and took a sip. So, Greg, let me ask you the same question that was put to me all those many years ago. How would you like to become immortal? Greg shook his head and death sighed, placing its drink down and producing a small hand held bell. Then I guess this is the end of our discussion. You can stay here if you want. Enjoy the endless bar and sunny beach. Once you are ready, just bring the bell and you'll cease to exist. Wait, what do you mean? Greg said, looking at the bell. You're going to kill me? Death walked around the bar, making sure its suit was in good order, before stopping next to Greg. Of course not. Technically, you've been dead since you touched my doors. All this was just a courtesy. Death patted Greg on the shoulder and smiled gently, like a parent to a child. Enjoy this while it lasts. You've earned it. And suddenly, Death was gone, and Greg sat alone in shock. He looked out into the sapphire blue seas and listened to the nature around him. Everything seemed like paradise to him, because it was paradise. And it was then that he realized why it had taken him so long to get here. With every path he took to reach this place seemed to have such a dead end, and why, when he finally did reach his final goal, it was far away from any other life form, surrounded by chaos and destruction to deter all who might try and find it. Death was being kind. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.